Hey, what's up guys, Mikey here. You know what the biggest problem in today's world is? A close second is robots and artificial intelligence. With all this money being put into technology instead of curing diseases, that's a problem. And I can't go on YouTube, Twitter, Amazon, etc. without some kind of paranoia of robots or AI watching over me. But at least I can take comfort in knowing that I have never been a robot or accused of being a robot, and I never will be. Years later. Still not a robot. Crabborg is the episode where Spongebob watches a scary movie about robots and becomes afraid of them and convinces Squidward that Mr. Krabs might be a robot. This episode aired on March 29, 2002, and is also known as the episode that features special guest star Rodney Bingenheimer as the radio DJ, and I apologize if I just mispronounced that name. This was another one of those guest stars that I remember seeing during the opening credits of the episode as a kid, but had no idea where the f his voice appeared in the show. I even remember seeing the DJ, but didn't put two and two together at the time because I was only like four or five on the day this episode premiered. It took me until I watched the show more religiously when I finally discovered the truth. It's cool that a real life DJ was the guest star as an underwater DJ in this episode. This episode also mentions Squidward's father, but he does not appear in the show officially until way later in episode 570, Momageddon from season 14. But other than that, I don't have much to say right now during my prologue. But oh, don't worry, I'll still have plenty to say later. So let's watch this episode and find out why today's fear of robot overlords is completely justified. So the episode starts up, and one night, Spongebob is watching a scary movie about robots. Gary tells Spongebob not to watch it since scary movies freak him out, and sure enough, this one did. Spongebob started worrying if everybody else around him was a robot, like his family or Gary. Well, if Spongebob's mom was a robot, odds are Spongebob would be a robot too. After asking Gary if he was a robot, which he wasn't, Spongebob went to sleep but had nightmares about the movie. Next morning, he was tired and paranoid thinking he saw robots everywhere. Meanwhile, Mr. Krabs was counting his money and put on Electric Zoo, the number one song in Bikini Bottom. I love this young people's music. I don't love today's young people's music. Spongebob was repeatedly startled, which of course annoyed Squidward while he was waiting for an order. Spongebob explained himself, but Squidward didn't really give a sh**. Spongebob delivered the food to a customer, and as he went back to work, he heard Mr. Krabs talking to his radio asking him to play the Electric Zoo song again. Spongebob started to think Mr. Krabs was a robot upon hearing this. Mr. Krabs called the radio DJ asking him to play that song again. He started making beeping noises to describe how the song went, but this was all Spongebob heard and he thought that this meant Mr. Krabs was a robot too. And what sealed his paranoia was seeing Mr. Krabs doing a robot style dance to the electronic music. He tried to warn Squidward about it, but Squidward didn't really care. So Spongebob tried to prove it by seeing if Mr. Krabs could laugh because he remembered the robots in the movie couldn't laugh because they had no sense of humor. He called Mr. Krabs out and said that Squidward told him a really funny joke. Squidward's joke was about a pirate movie rated R. Squidward laughed at it, but Mr. Krabs didn't think it was very funny and left. Spongebob thought that this meant Mr. Krabs was a robot, but Squidward says he didn't laugh because he's heard it before. I heard that joke before, and I still laugh every time I hear it. Spongebob called Mr. Krabs out again and said Squidward's dad never hugged him to see if that would make Mr. Krabs cry upon hearing it. He didn't, and this got Spongebob more paranoid, and decided to do one final test, a love test. Spongebob calls Mr. Krabs and said Squidward loves him, but Mr. Krabs just told Squidward to get back to work which he says to Squidward when Spongebob is the one not at his post. Back in Mr. Krabs' office, his radio died, but the batteries were still fine. He put them in his back pocket to give them to Pearl for Christmas. He grabbed tongs to fish his hard-boiled egg from the water, and as he grabbed salt, Spongebob called his name again, which startled Mr. Krabs so much the salt got in his eyes. Spongebob told Squidward that the robots had red eyes, metal pitchers for hands, and they ran on batteries. And Mr. Krabs came out of his office with red eyes, the tongs, and batteries in his back pockets. Spongebob and Squidward got scared from this, and Spongebob tried to call the Navy. 
The Navy's automated phone service made SpongeBob think robots took over the Navy. So Squidward told the customers that robots had taken over their world, so they ran out of the restaurant. That's one of the only things I'd run away from. That and student loans. Mr. Krabs came out with his eyes feeling better and sang Electric Zoo by making beeping sounds. In order to find out what the robot did with the real Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob suggests interrogating Mr. Krabs to get info out of him, so Squidward agrees. They grab various torture supplies and go into Mr. Krabs' office. They tie him up and Squidward slaps him, which SpongeBob didn't like seeing. Squidward reminded SpongeBob this was the robot Krabs and they need to find out what he knows. They constantly ask him where the real Mr. Krabs is, but they got nowhere, and Mr. Krabs asks the question everybody asks when they go to those websites that need you to prove you're not a robot. What? You think I'm a robot? Mr. Krabs thought that this was absolutely ridiculous. SpongeBob got an idea to get him to crack. He explained how he heard Mr. Krabs talk to his radio and called it his little buddy, so he decided to have other appliances that Mr. Krabs owns to get the truth out of. Mr. Krabs started to freak out, and whenever the machines didn't talk, Squidward just flat out destroyed them with a baseball bat. The only remaining robot was the cash register, and the thought of this being wrecked got Mr. Krabs to cry. He also admitted he loved the cash register and the laughs they shared. So this is the only one of Mr. Krabs' robots that could actually talk? SpongeBob admitted that the movie ended with the robots being a figment of everybody's imagination and ran away to feed Gary. Squidward awkwardly swept up the mess, Mr. Krabs was f***ing pissed, and the episode ends. So that was Crabborg, and that is a solid episode in my opinion. I'd say it's as good as it could have been for an episode that wanted to make sure we're always talking to actual people and not bots or AI. I remember when I watched this when I was young, the scenes that stuck in my head the most were the Electric Zoo song, the parts where Squidward smashed the hell out of Mr. Krabs' appliances, and the ending when he's pissed over Squidward destroying everything. Fun fact, with the amounts of money Mr. Krabs said he lost when Squidward smashed everything, it adds up to a total of $120.12. The copy maker doesn't count since Mr. Krabs said that was a gift. Continuing on the topic of fun facts, the man in the movie at the beginning being chased by the robot is D. Bradley Baker, a voice actor who voices various background fish and Squilliam Fancy Son. The Electric Zoo song was written by one of the writers and storyboard directors of the episode, Paul Tibbet. In addition to Squidward's dad being mentioned, SpongeBob also mentions his Uncle Sherm for the first time. What if Uncle Sherm is a robot? And he hasn't made a physical appearance in the show currently, but SpongeBob did show a picture of him in episode 189, Pest of the West, from season 5. During this shot, you can see this calendar on the wall that says September, which means this episode most likely takes place in September. Even if we don't know the year, this episode is also really funny because SpongeBob and Squidward think Mr. Krabs is a robot here, when back in episode 49, Imitation Krabs from season 2, Plankton made a robot of Mr. Krabs as an attempt to get the Krabby Patty secret formula. But at least there, we did see the real and robot Mr. Krabs in the frame at the same time. But even then, that just makes me imagine the possibilities. What if, in this episode, Plankton did try to bring out the Mr. Krabs robot to steal the formula, and this is how Plankton's plan was foiled? That would be hilarious too. But I can't complain about either of these outcomes, honestly. Both episodes are funny, and pretty distinct since both of them involve Mr. Krabs and robots, especially since the plots are exact opposites of each other. There are a lot of other hilarious moments. I like Spongebob's robot nightmare, all of Spongebob's jumpy behavior in the kitchen, the interrogation scene, the Navy's automated phone service, when Squidward throws Spongebob in the kitchen and is then confused when Spongebob pops up in the boat again, and the list goes on and on. I think Spongebob's reasonings for thinking Mr. Krabs is a robot are understandable enough. Mr. Krabs' eyes being red as a result of the salt in his eyes, talking to his radio, and the strange dancing. It wasn't a hallucination or a vision like what we saw earlier in the kitchen, or from episode 118, Fear of a Krabby Patty from season 4. I also love all of the characters in this episode. I love how Gary is annoyed with all of Spongebob's actions about the robots. I love Spongebob's rising paranoia about robots that gets peaked when Mr. Krabs doesn't react to any of Squidward's statements. I really like Mr. Krabs' rapidly changing emotions during the interrogation scene, and how pissed he is when he finds out they think he's a robot. 
And I love how Squidward is concerned when Spongebob is crying. In my opinion, this is one of the best portrayals of Squidward in the whole show. Squidward is still annoyed with Spongebob's jumpiness at the beginning and thinks Spongebob's claims that Mr. Krabs is a robot are absolutely f***ing ridiculous. Then the visual of Mr. Krabs looking more robot-like officially convinces him and he works with Spongebob without any hesitation to find out what happened to the real Mr. Krabs. And he doesn't lose his patience when trying to interrogate Mr. Krabs at all. I think that is a pretty strong moment for Squidward. I'd probably go as far to say that he's the most likable character in this episode, since he had to put up with wearing Spongebob's hat on his nose and got roped into Spongebob's paranoia pretty quickly, and even though he smashed Mr. Krabs' appliances, you still can't help but feel bad for him when all the antics have wrapped up. This is just a great episode all around. I just love everything from this one. I'd be damned if I find something I don't like. There aren't really any nitpicks I have with this one. If anything, maybe I wish the visual of Mr. Krabs looking like a robot was a bit more believable, like maybe a second pair of tongs, but that doesn't matter in the slightest. This is just a fun watch from start to finish. I remember briefly in middle school, a couple friends and I just went back and forth with the Where's Mr. Krabs line and did jokingly call each other robots. That was a fun time. I always enjoyed watching this and it's another simple pleasure I get from this season. And to the potential person who has an irrational fear of robots whose fear was sparked because of this episode, I am so sorry. Crab Borg is a really good episode. It's got a lot of classic moments, both with the characters in general and with all the funny gags spread throughout the runtime. Even though it does have to do with robots in the early 2000s, there's nothing here that really makes me feel scared when I'm watching it, so that's a good thing. But all this talk about robots and AI in general still has me petrified for the future, so let's stop talking about robots and abruptly change our conversation to be about raising children. Rockabye Bivalve is the episode where Spongebob and Patrick raise an orphan baby scallop as parents and get into arguments while doing so. Like Crab Borg, this episode aired on March 29, 2002, and as of season 14, is apparently the episode with the most time cards throughout the series, with a total of 5 which I'm only now just learning at the today point of my life. Also, for some reason, back in the late 2000s or 2010s or so, there was apparently some controversy surrounding this episode, since it was an episode about two males raising a child together like parents on a show that is produced for a kid's channel. I personally can understand the controversy, but at the same time, I wondered why people thought about something that deeply at all for a show like this. So we'll discuss just that later. Right now, let's watch this episode and see if it truly deserved to be thought of like that way. It didn't. So the episode starts up and the newspaper arrived at Spongebob's house. He gave the paper to Gary and played around with the rubber band before running into Patrick. They walked away awkwardly and then heard some kind of sound and became increasingly annoyed with each other, but then realized what they heard was just a baby scallop. Spongebob pointed out how helpless the scallop was and had nobody to take care of him. So they both took him into Spongebob's house. Spongebob gave him a box to sleep in, which was his pants. It's the best seat in the house. Does that mean Spongebob wears boxes and not clothes? The scallop got hungry and Spongebob and Patrick tried all sorts of foods, none of which the scallop wanted, until a worm popped up out of the apple, which they fed him. Then he started crying and Spongebob tried to cheer him up, but it didn't work. But Patrick realized he was upset because his diaper needed changing, so he did that in no time. Spongebob and Patrick decided to take care of the scallop themselves until he's old enough to be on his own. Patrick's body was what made him decide to be the dad of the relationship. Well, Spongebob has shown his reproductive capabilities in the show before, and Patrick hasn't. So that also makes sense why Patrick is the dad. Later, Spongebob and Patrick took their scallop Junior out on a walk, and there was a musical montage of them having fun together, ending with Junior hijacking the bike with Spongebob and Patrick chasing after him. That night, Spongebob and Patrick put Junior to bed, and they go to bed themselves with Patrick being suffocated under Spongebob's top two mattresses. The next morning, Patrick scarfed down all the breakfast at once and found out Junior had another dirty diaper. Spongebob had more arms than usual to do things, but Patrick left to go to work, promising Spongebob a break when he got home. Later that night, Patrick arrived home exhausted from work. He sat down to watch TV, promising Spongebob a break tomorrow. Tomorrow. 
The following night, Patrick was tired again and said he'd give SpongeBob a break tomorrow for sure. Tomorrow for sure. Patrick said he'd do it eventually. Eventually. Uh. Uh. SpongeBob finally interrupted Patrick's coconut show, saying he hasn't once done his share at all aside from changing Junior's diaper once. Followed by Spongebob showing all the diapers he has changed himself, with a mound of them burying Squidward's house. Is that why Squidward isn't shown here? Patrick realized he was a bad dad and promised to make it up to Spongebob. The next day, Patrick promised to work through lunch and get home on time, and gave Spongebob the night off, meaning Patrick would be home at 6 o'clock, but he didn't get home until 12 o'clock midnight. Patrick came back with a lampshade hat, and Spongebob was not happy to see him as Patrick had not kept his promise and apparently didn't remember the aforementioned promise. After Spongebob mocked Patrick, Patrick left and went back to his rock claiming to go back to work. Spongebob got mad and saw that Patrick's work was watching TV with Patrick making excuses. I too made excuses when watching TV. Spongebob dumped the sweets from Patrick's briefcase on his head, which led into a heated argument, and it didn't stop until they heard Junior about to jump out of a two-story window. Spongebob and Patrick ran to catch him, but they didn't make it in time, but it turns out Junior was able to fly all on his own now. Junior kissed Spongebob and Patrick goodbye, and they were quite satisfied for the good deed they did for him, and Patrick suggested having another baby, and the episode ends. He means to adopt another. So that was Rockabye by Valve, and I say that's a decent episode at the very least. I always remember this episode for quite a few reasons. Most notably, the really funny time cards, Patrick guffawing over the show where somebody got hit with a coconut, and then got hit in the head with a coconut as comeuppance for being lazy, every shot with Spongebob's multiple arms, Patrick's world record for eating breakfast, and pretty much the ending scene as a whole. Those were the most memorable scenes for me, but I like a lot of others too like the montage of Spongebob and Patrick taking Junior outside, and these two being confused on why they're raising a scallop, the first scene where Spongebob and Patrick try to take care of Junior before they decide to raise him themselves, when Spongebob shows all of Junior's diapers, and the scene where Spongebob is mad in a dress and hair curlers. There's a lot of good gags in this one too. Obviously I love the coconut part, whether Patrick's the victim or not, but I also love the ones with Gary on the skateboard, the Spongebob puppet, when Patrick got crushed by two of Spongebob's mattresses, all of the ice cream in Patrick's briefcase, and Spongebob and Patrick's giant eyes. I'd say my other favorite part is where Gary does a rim shot on the drum set with his name on it. I want a drum set like that and I don't even play drums. Fun fact about me when I was really young, the first time I saw this, I was confused on how to pronounce bivalve and didn't know what it meant for a while until I got older and learned that bivalve is just another word for oyster or clam. Props to this show for teaching stuff about the sea. I like how this is a good representation of how parenthood isn't always sunshine and roses. It's a lot of hard work and the parents don't always see eye to eye whenever they're raising their child. I remember as a kid, both of my parents worked, but my dad's parents lived with us too, so I still came home after school. My mom did a lot of work and took me out for ice cream a lot after dinner during summer vacation, and my dad did do a lot of hard work, sometimes at a job where he was pissed off from everything and everybody around him, but he and my mom still worked together if I needed them. My dad was nowhere near as lazy as Patrick was, and my parents never got as intense towards each other as Spongebob and Patrick did. They never got divorced either, so I was lucky to have good parents growing up, and grandparents for that matter, since not everybody did. Patrick even says at the end that their child growing up and leaving home is the hardest part of every parent's life. I'll never forget how my mom told me that my dad cried on the way home after they moved me into college. So yeah, this is an accurate representation of parenthood. Which leads us into the other main point of discussion. The fact that this kid show features an episode about two guys raising a child together as if they're a couple or something. When I was young, I never would have thought twice about this being some kind of subliminal message. I just always thought of this as showing how parenthood can be a pain in the ass sometimes. Especially with other parents from other Nickelodeon shows not being good parents at all, like Timmy's parents from The Fairly Odd Parents, or Tori and Trina's parents from Victorious. 
Even when there was the bed scene and it looked like Spongebob and Patrick were going to sleep together before this was shown, I already noticed the corner of the bed here in this shot, so I knew that this wasn't going to be Spongebob and Patrick sleeping directly next to each other in the same bed. And besides, Spongebob slept in the same bed as Squidward in episode 11, Home Sweet Pineapple from season 1, and nobody has ever mentioned that as a point of controversy in this episode like they do for this in this one. So why are they upset about this one? Not only that, but there was also a recurring storyline in Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide where Ned and Cookie were partners in life science and had to be the alternative family when raising a baby doll since there was an odd number of boys in that class, and I never heard a single soul complaining about this at all. And this show came out after this episode did. Granted, this was for a class in middle school, and it served as karma for Ned and Cookie's actions for constantly trying to be in the same elective as Moe's, but still. Also, Spongebob and Patrick did argue in this episode, but they argue several times in this series, before and after this one. Sure, there was Spongebob's reaction to another kid at the end, but I know that this was because he didn't want to go through all that bullshit with Patrick again when taking care of another baby animal together. I personally think all the hate this episode got from everything Spongebob and Patrick did together was a bit overblown, but I'm sure the writers weren't making this thinking, I know what I want to do today. By this point, the show did indeed have its adult fans, even if they weren't as common as they are today. But this was definitely the episode from season 3 that is the most notorious for its theme compared to something like episode 74, I'm with Stupid from season 2, where the hate is a bit more understandable since Patrick betrayed Spongebob for his own good to look smarter in front of who he thought were his parents. In my opinion, this episode did a lot really well with a good portrayal of parenthood, but not teaching it's better to just not have kids at all. It teaches that communication is key with everything, especially a big commitment like raising a child. My parents were great at working together, and Spongebob and Patrick didn't communicate well in the second half of the story. I honestly think that this one becomes more relatable over time. As a kid, you watch and laugh, and when you get older and have kids yourself, you realize how much you actually relate to it. Being tired, arguing with your spouse, and watching your kid grow up. So overall, this is a fine episode. It has a lot of funny jokes, and all the parenthood parallels are pretty clever for what they're worth. The hate this episode received for its theme was unwarranted, and the only reason people thought of it at all is because Nickelodeon wanted to manipulate their fans to think something like that and get the internet mad. So this episode did nothing wrong, and it's definitely something I'd say becomes more relatable over time. Oh right, I forgot. This episode has Spongebob's famous OVERTIME face. I take it all back. This was the reason why all the controversy surrounding this episode was completely unnecessary. Rockabye Bye Valve is a decent episode. I do like all the funny gags and sequences throughout, the character moments, and all the great ways they portray parenthood. While the worry about the theme of this episode makes sense on paper, I still feel they were unwarranted because the show would not intentionally promote themes like that to its audience, no matter how old the viewer is. They know better than that. But credit where credit is due. This episode taught me about the importance of communication during parenthood. So now, I think I'm ready to raise a child. HA! If that ever happens!